Hey guys, welcome to Med School Made Easy. So we'll have a look at the muscles of the upper limb in this video. So we'll be talking about the bones of the upper limb, uh, the muscles of the arm, the muscles of the forearm and also the muscles of the hand. So let's have a quick look at the bones of the upper limb. So we have the humerus here in the upper arm and we have the ulna and the radius in the forearm and the carpals, the metacarpals and the phalanges in the hand. And if we have a closer look at the carpal bones, uh, we have eight carpal bones, namely the trapezoid, the trapezium, the scaphoid, the lunate, uh, the pisiform, the, uh, the triquitrum, the capitate and the hamate. And the muscles of the arm, uh, these group of muscles are actually divided into two groups, which are the anterior or the volar compartment, the dorsal or the posterior compartment, which is demarcated by this intermuscular septum between the radius and the ulna. And at the attachment of the anterior compartment muscles, we have the biceps brachii, the coracobrachialis and the brachialis. So if we look at the coracobrachialis, it is originated from the tip of the coracoid process and inserts into the mid shaft of the humerus. And then the biceps brachii, which has two heads, the short head and the long head. The short head originated from the tip of the coracoid process along with the coracobrachialis muscle. And the long head originating from uh, the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. And the short head is inserted into the radial tuberosity where the long head actually extends into uh, the forearm as the bicepital aponeurosis, which also separates the brachial artery from um, uh, the medial cubital vein. And we have the brachialis muscle originating from the lower half of the humerus and also the medial and the lateral intermuscular septum. And it goes and inserts into the coronoid process and the ulna tuberosity. So looking into the posterior compartment muscles, we have uh, the triceps brachii. As the name implies, it has three heads, uh, the medial head, the lateral head and the long head. So the long head of the triceps brachii is um, originating from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and inserting into the posterior part of the olecranon process and the lateral head is originating uh, from the oblique ridge of the shaft of the humerus and inserting into the posterior part of the olecranon process along with the long head tendon and we have the medial head originating from the posterior surface of the shaft of the humerus and also the medial and the lateral uh, intermuscular septa um, inserting in, uh, partly into the superficial tendon and partly into the olecranon process. And if we talk about the muscles of the forearm, uh, these group of muscles are again divided into two main groups, which is the anterior compartment or the flexors and the posterior compartment or the extensors. Uh, then again, these compartments are again divided, uh, I mean subdivided into the superficial layer and the deep layer of muscles. So you can have a look at these muscles here, the superficial layer, for example, we have the pronated teres, the flexor copi radialis and so on. And in the deep layer, we have the flexor pollicis longus and the flexor digitorum profundus and so on, which is the anterior compartment. So we'll have a look at the superficial muscles of the anterior compartment of uh, the forearm. So we have the pronated teres originating from the medial epicondyle of the humerus inserting into the middle lateral shaft of the radius and the flexor carpi radialis originating from at the medial epicondyle of the humerus again uh, inserting into the second and uh, the third metacarpal bones and we have the palmaris longus uh, again originating from the medial epicondyle of the humerus inserting into the flexor retinaculum and the palm of aponeurosis and we have the flexor digitorum superficialis which has two heads the humeral ulna head and the radial head the first originating from uh, the medial epicondyle of the humerus and also the coronary process of the ulna and the second head or the radial head originating from the 
anterior shaft of the radius and this whole muscle divides into four tendons and uh, these tendons are inserted uh, into the middle phalanges of the second to fourth uh, fifth digits of the hand and we have flexor carpi ulnaris which also has two heads the humeral head and the ulna head the first originated from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the second from the medial auricular process and the posterior uh, part of the ulna and inserting into the pisiform bone uh, the hamate and the fifth metacarpal bone and the deep muscles of this compartment the anterior compartment we have the flexor digitorum profundus originated from the upper three-fourth of the shaft of the ulna and also the olecranon process the coronoid process of the ulna and the introsis membrane inserting into uh, this whole muscle actually forms four tendons and insert uh, itself into the distal phalanges of the second to fifth digits of the hand and we have the flexor pollicis longus originating from uh, the upper three-fourth of the shaft of the radius and also the introsis membrane inserting into the distal phalanx of the thumb or the first digit and then we have the pronator quadratus originating from the lower one-fourth of the shaft of the ulna um, and the superficial fibers uh, of this muscle are uh, inserted into the lower one-fourth of the radius where the deep fibers of this muscle uh, I inserted uh, into the area above the ulna notch and if we look at the posterior compartment or the extensors we have the anconius we have um, the extensor indices the supinator extensor carpi radialis longus and so on uh, let's uh, look into some details of these muscles so the superficial compartment of the posterior I mean the superficial layer of the posterior compartment we have the anconius originating from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus inserting into the olecranon process of the ulna and we have the brachioradialis originating sorry here it is brachioradialis um, originating from uh, the upper two-third of the humerus inserting into the styloid process of the radius and we have the extensor carpi radialis longus originating from the lower one-fourth of the humerus inserting into the second metacarpal bone and we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis originating from the uh, lateral epicondyle of the humerus inserting into the third metacarpal bone and the fifth act, uh, fifth uh, muscle the extensor digitorum originating from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus again inserting into the middle phalanges of the second to fifth digits and we have the extensor digiti minimi originating from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus again and then inserting into the extensor expansion of the fifth uh, digit and we have the extensor carpi ulnaris originating from the lateral epicondyle um, inserting into the fifth metacarpal bone and uh, the deep muscles of this compartment has the supinator which is originated from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and also the annular ligament annular ligament here inserting into the neck and the upper one third of the shaft of the radius and we have the second muscle the abductor pollicis longus originating from the posterior shaft of the radius and the ulna inserting into the first metacarpal bone we have the extensor pollicis brevis originating from the posterior shaft of the humerus inserting into the proximal phalanx of the thumb and we have the extensor pollicis longus originating from the posterior shaft of the ulna inserting into the distal phalanx of the thumb and the extensor indices originating from the posterior shaft of the ulna inserting into the extensor expansion of the second digit and uh, let's have a look at the muscles of the hand we have the introsi muscles the palm introsi and the dorsal introsi and a whole lot of muscles here and uh, let's have a look at those muscles in detail too um, so if we talk about the attachment we have the first group of muscles uh, the muscles of the tina eminence which has three muscles the abductor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis brevis and the opponent's pollicis 
first originating from the tubercle of the scaphoid, the trapezium, and the flexor retinaculum, and the second originating from the trapezoid, the capitate, and the flexor retinaculum, and the third uh, just from the uh, uh, just from the flexor retinaculum, inserting into the first and second inserting into the proximal phalanx of the thumb, and the third inserting into the shaft of the metacarpal of the thumb, and we have the adductor policies which has two heads, the oblique head and the transverse head, and the oblique head originating from the second and third metacarpals, and the transverse head originating from the shaft of the third metacarpal, um, inserting into the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And we have the palmaris brevis, which is on the medial side of the palm, originating from the flexor retinaculum, inserting into the skin of the medial palm. And we have uh, the muscles of the hypothena eminence, abductor digiti, uh, digiti minimi, flexor digiti minimi, and the pons digiti minimi. First originated from the pisiform bone, and uh, the other two from the flexor retinaculum. And the first two uh, inserting into the proximal phalanx of the fifth digit, and the third into the metacarpal bone of the fifth digit. So the continuation of those muscles. Um, we have the lumbricals and these lumbricals uh, are arising from four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus of the forearm and the first originating from the second digit uh, and third from a uh, tendon of, uh, and the second from the tendon of the third digit and the third from the third and the fourth digits and the fourth from the fourth and the fifth digits and uh, these actually insert into the basis of the distal phalanges of the second to fifth digits and we have the palmar interosi muscles we have four and the first from the first metacarpal second from the second metacarpal uh, from the medial meta uh, medial side of these metacarpal bones and uh, third and the fourth from the fourth and the fifth metacarpals and inserting into first inserting into the proximal phalanx of the thumb and the second one uh, inserting into the uh, distal phalanx of the second digit and the third into the distal phalanx of the fourth digit and the fourth into the distal phalanx of the fifth digit and we have uh, finally the dorsal interosi muscles um, the first one originating from the first and the second metacarpals and the second from the second and the third metacarpals and third from the third and the fourth metacarpals and the fourth uh, from the fourth and the fifth metacarpals inserting into uh, the first muscle to the distal phalanx of the second digit and the second into the third digit and the third into the fourth digit and the fourth into the uh, I mean the distal phalanx of the fourth digit so those are the muscles of the upper limb and thank you for watching i hope you found that helpful stay tuned for more